Hi guys, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to the next video of this entire series of Exchange Server 2019. In the last video, we installed Edge Transport Server in our on-premise Exchange environment and we tested and analyzed the external inbound and outbound email flow. In this particular video, we will be talking about accepted domains. We will discuss what are accepted domains in Exchange Server, what are the different types of accepted domains, how to add additional domains in Exchange Server, how to assign those additional domains to the recipients, and how to configure additional accepted domains to send and receive emails in on-premise Exchange organization. An accepted domain is an SMTP domain name or SMTP namespace that you configure in on-premise Exchange organization to send and receive emails. When you set up a domain controller in your on-premise environment, during promoting that server to a domain controller, we mention a domain name for our new forest. And when you install Exchange Server, that forest domain name is added under accepted domains within Exchange Server. You can assign this domain as a domain suffix for the email addresses for users, groups, public folders, or any other mail-enabled recipients. And these mail enabled recipients will use that email address to send and receive emails. But you can come across few scenarios where you want to add additional domains or subdomains in your on premise exchange organization. Let's assume you have a subdomain that is hr.office365concepts.com and you want to use this domain as a domain suffix for the user's email addresses. Or let's assume you have occupied another company and you want to use a different domain for the user's email addresses who belong to that company. So in these scenarios, you would require to add the additional domains under accepted domains before you start using them for email addresses. Once you have added additional domain under accepted domains, users can send and receive emails to each other internally. They can even send emails to external users as well. And for this, you do not have to make any changes within your on-premise infrastructure. But if you want to let your users to receive emails from internet, in that case, you need to publish MX record for the additional domain in your public DNS. Only then these users will be able to receive emails from the internet. In Exchange Server, accepted domains are of three types. Authoritative domains, internal relay domains and external relay domains. When you install Exchange Server, the Active Directory Forest root domain is added as an authoritative domain under accepted domains in Exchange Server. Authoritative domain is the domain for which the Exchange organization hosts the mailboxes. That means the users or the recipients who are using that domain for their email addresses all these recipients will be hosted on the same exchange organization. And if your domain is added as an authoritative domain, and if an email is sent to a user that is not part of your exchange organization, that email will be rejected and the sender will receive an NDR or non-delivery report. The next type of accepted domain in exchange server is internal relay domain. Internal relay domain is a domain type where you host some of the mailboxes in Exchange Server and some of the mailboxes on a different Exchange organization. For example, Exchange Online. You create internal relay domain when you share the same domain name between two different Exchange organizations. In internal relay domain type, recipients are created as mail users in Exchange Online. If an email is sent to the user that has a mailbox in on-premise, Exchange Online doesn't reject that email. It looks for the outbound connector to route that email to on-premise Exchange Server. This scenario is also called shared SMTP namespace. The third type of accepted domain type is external relay domain. This type of domain is mostly used by ISPs or when you are configuring edge transport servers on your internal Exchange organization. In external relay domain, Exchange Server receives the email for a domain, but it doesn't host any of the mailboxes. For example, your Exchange organization is the central location for accepting internet email for a group of separate organizations. 
Now let's move to our lab and let me show you how to add additional domains in accepted domains and how to use that domain to send and receive emails. So this is the default domain which is already added under accepted domains in on-premise exchange. Currently I'm using this domain for all the recipients for their email addresses and they are using this domain to send and receive emails. I have one more domain that is purchased from GoDaddy and that domain is o365techlabs.com. As of now, I haven't used this domain in my on-premise. So this domain is not assigned to any of the email addresses in on-premise. Now my requirement is I have few users or let's assume I have occupied another organization and I want to assign this domain to those users for their email addresses so that they can use this domain to send and receive emails. So first, we need to add this domain in our on-premise exchange server. We will go to Mailflow, Accepted Domains, click on Plus. Under New Accepted Domain, you will give it a name. For example, you can type the domain name as well. And then you need to type the domain that you want to add under Accepted Domains. So the domain is o365techlabs.com. Here you can select if you want to set this domain as authoritative, internal relay or external relay. I want to set this domain as authoritative. So select the option and then click save. So this domain is added under accepted domains. Now we can go ahead and we can assign this domain as a domain suffix for the email addresses for our on-premise recipients. There are different ways to assign a domain for email address suffix. For example, you can go to recipients. If you already have one existing recipient, you can go to properties of that mailbox and then go to email addresses. Under email addresses, you need to click plus. So here you can see this user already has one email address and that is Bob Ross at office365concepts.com. This domain is already added in Exchange Server because this is our forest root domain, and this is a routable domain. So capital SMTP indicates it's a primary email address. If you want, you can add the second domain as a secondary email address domain suffix. So you can click plus, and here you can type the email address. For example, Bob Ross at 0365 techlabs.com. If you want to make this email address as primary email address, in that case, you can check this option. If you do not check this option, in that case, this email will be added as secondary email address. Now, what is the difference between primary email address and secondary email address? Primary email address is used to send and receive emails, but the secondary email address can be used only to receive emails. You cannot use secondary email address to send emails. So let's click OK. Now here you can see this secondary email address is added as small SMTP. So this indicates this is a secondary email address. So click Save. Now this email address is added as a secondary email address for Bob Ross. If you want to make this email address as primary email address, you can check this option, make this the reply address and then click OK. Now here you can see this email address is changed to capital SMTP. So now this is the primary email address. So this is the one way to add additional accepted domain and to add that domain in email address suffixes. If you want to add this particular domain for a new user, you will click plus user mailbox. And let's create a new user. Let's select the organizational unit where you want to save this user. Assign it a login name. And then assign it password. And click Save. Now let's go to this mailbox properties and go to email address. Here you can see the secondary domain is not added by default. 
I'll tell you this later, why it is not added. Now, if you want to add a secondary email address, you can click on plus. Again, you can follow the same process. You can add the email address for the additional domain and then click OK. Click Save. Now this email address is added. Now, the reason why you are not getting this email address assigned automatically is because you do not have email address policies. Email address policy is used to assign email addresses automatically to the users. For example, if I create new email address policy, let me give it a name like test email policy. Click on plus. Under select and accepted domain, you need to select the additional domain or any domain as per your requirement that you want to assign to the recipients for their email addresses. Then you need to select the format of the email address. If you select the first option, then it will consider it as alias of the user at domain.com or first dot last name at domain.com. So as per your requirement, you can select the format. If you want initial of the first name and then last name at domain.com, you can select this format. So as per your requirement, you can select the format and then click save. Next, you can select to which recipients you want to assign this policy by default. If you select all recipient types, that means whenever you will create a recipient in your exchange server, by default, this policy will be applied. In exchange server, you have a default policy. But if you create a custom policy, in that case, that custom policy will take precedence. So that means whenever you will create a recipient in your exchange server, by default, the custom policy will be applied on the recipients. So here you can select if you want to assign this policy to all the recipients, users with exchange mailboxes, mail users, resource mailboxes, or mail enabled groups or mail contacts. So as per your requirement, you can make the selection or you can create a rule as well. Click save and this policy will be created. And once you will create the policy, by default that policy will be unapplied. So you will select the policy and then you will click apply on the right side. Click yes. And now this policy is enabled. So now if I go to recipients and mailboxes and if I create a new user, let's create test user two, new user, user two, and let's select the organizational unit, login name, and let's save the changes. Let's go to the user account now, properties, email address. Now you can see the primary email address is assigned as test user two at o three six five techlabs.com. If you want to add additional domain or additional email address, you can add like test user two at office three six five concepts.com and then click OK. Click save. So this email address is added as secondary email address and the additional domain, additional accepted domain is added as primary email address. So this is how you can add the accepted domains. Now, once you have added the accepted domain, users can send and receive emails to the internal users. They can even send emails to the external user as well using this domain, but they cannot receive emails on this domain because I have purchased this domain from GoDaddy, but I do not have any MX record for this domain. So whenever a sending server or external email server will send email, DNS will always look for the MX record for this domain. So I have to add MX record for this domain as well. So MX record will be at, you can give it a priority. And here we will type mail.office365concepts.com. Add record. So if any email will be sent to this domain, o365techlabs.com, that email will be resolved on 
this exchange server that is mail.office365concepts.com. Now, if we go to EXRCA or Remote Connectivity Analyzer, and if I test inbound email flow for one of our on-premise user that has this email address, that is test user two. Let's test with test user two at o three six five techlabs dot com. And let's run this test. So here we can see the test is passed and it has successfully resolved mail.office365concepts.com for o365techlabs.com. So that means the users who are using this domain for their email addresses, they can successfully receive emails from internet. If you want to test the outbound email flow, you can go to outbound SMTP email test. I'll remove reverse DNS check because I do not have reverse DNS configured for my domain. So this test will fail. Perform test. So the test is successful, but here is some warning. So let's check. Most probably this warning will be for SPF record because I do not have SPF record published for this domain. So if I add one SPF record, let me quickly add one SPF record here. So I'll take the same value that is configured for the other domain. Let's verify the SPF record if it is published or not. Let's try again. So this is published. Now let's go back to remote connectivity analyzer and let's run outbound test one more time. So now we can see the test is successful and now the SPF is also passed. So it says SPF record was found. So this is how you can add additional domains in Exchange Server and you can configure them to send and receive emails from your Exchange Server. In the next video, we will be talking about message tracking logs in Exchange Server. We will discuss what is message tracking and what are the different ways to track your emails in Exchange Server 2019. So that is all for now. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you all. Thank you for your time. Take care.